from the fairy tale tarot deck, which is a lot of fun. So we always pull the cards. So I pulled the card before the show so that I didn't have to waste time looking for the story. The card is the Nine of Swords. Try and give you guys a really good look at it if you're in the live stream. There's a lot of swords. There is an old craggy tree. There is what looks to be like maybe, well, it's a person, but maybe it's like a, an elf or a fairy in the water. And there's water. I should have said that. Maybe this is a river or a stream. And there's birds in the distance. Let's find out what it's all about. So the story itself is the moss green princess. The culture is African. The key words are deception, illusions, and anxieties. Hmm. Fitting. Let's see how this ties in. I'll read the story. I will give you my interpretation of why we need to know that right now and what we can take from it. But I always appreciate your comments in the chat room as well about what uh, that meant to you. You know, it's good to catch everybody's uh, interpretation of this kind of stuff so that we can collaborate on it because you might have heard something that I didn't uh, or caught something that I didn't. So I do really love to hear that. So let's collaborate on it. Okay. And here we go. Once upon a time, there was a princess named Katila. Her mother loved her dearly, but the king despised Katila's mother and took it upon himself to make his daughter's life miserable. Meanwhile, his other wife was the favored queen. His daughter, Mappendane, wore the finest garments and was lavished with assorted beaded necklaces. But despite the iniquity, there was no jealousy be between Katila and Madipane. They spent all of their time together and loved each other dearly. Katila grew into a beautiful young woman. This so angered the king that he ordered his councilman to retrieve the skin of a nai... Mm. Naya Naya, I'm hoping, Naya Naya Bulumbu, a fairy beast whose name signified despised one covered with moss. It had long teeth and claws and was covered in moss. After several failed attempts to find the Bulumbu, they finally lured one from a shimmering green pool. It followed them back to the crawl, the village corral, where it was speared and skinned. The king cruelly forced the skin over Katila and watched it adhere to her form. In the skin of a beast, her captivating beauty was lost beneath a shroud of moss. No longer was she an exquisite young woman of the village. Now she was despised, a despised creature for all to loathe. The king felt sure that he had sealed Katila's fate by turning her into a monster. If it wasn't for the love of her mother and her sister, she may have been banished altogether. One day, a swarm of birds swooped down and seized Medipine. They carried her to the sky and disappeared before anyone could stop them. Medipine was brought to the faraway village of a great king. There, she fell in love with the king and lived happily in her new royal home. But because of the distance, her parents did not know what became of their cherished daughter and presumed the birds must have dropped her to her death. The disappearance of Medipine spelled further heartache for Katila. Her father's devastation turned to wrath and hatred. His inflamed temper knew no bounds as he lashed out at his innocent daughter. Katila was made to do merciless hard labor from sunrise to sunset, her heavy monster skin weighing her down. Katila suffered and cried, but her mother reassured her that the skin she wore came from a fairy beast, foretelling a proprietous future. It 
it was only a matter of time before her fortunes would change. One day, Katila was out in the field. A fairy disguised as an old man gave her a magic stick, saying, This stick will help you see your true form whenever you touch water. Of course, there was going to be a magic stick, right? And of course, birds carrying someone away to marry their kidnapper. Yep. Good call, Belle. <laughs> Katila thanked the old man, suspecting that there was a magic being. So, so I'm sorry, suspecting that he was a magical being. She then went to a lake and slogged with her burdensome monster covering into the water. As she did so, her beastly cloak melted away. She could feel a lightness return to her human skin and was soothed by the cool water. Flying fairies coaxed her down to look at her reflection, where she saw, saw her true form, that of a beautiful princess. She frolicked with the fairies until she had to return home. But as soon as she hit dry land, her Balembu form reappeared, stifling Katila with its unwieldy bulk. After that, Katila would sneak into the lake whenever she could. It wasn't long until the village children discovered her secret. They would watch from behind the bushes as she shed her monster skin and cavorted with the fairies. Of course she did. Who wouldn't be cavorting with fairies? But one day a prince came to town. He was in search of a special woman to be his wife. The children gathered around, claiming to know a woman who befriended fairies. The intrigued prince was taken to the hiding place, where the prince watched her transform from beast to beauty. He immediately fell in love with her, for he knew that only a special woman could possess such magical qualities. He ran back to the crawl and told the king, I will marry your daughter, the monster. The king laughed, thinking it was a joke. But when the prince persisted, the king readily agreed, being glad to get rid of her once and for all. Katila escorted the prince back to his village, where everyone looked at his hideous betrothed with skepticism, but they dared not question his choice. On the morning of the wedding, Katila bathed in a pool and watched her balumbu skin slide off for one last time. It rose into the air, traveled back to her old village, and landed on her mother's doorstep. Upon seeing the skin, her mother knew that the fairy magic had worked and her daughter would now be happy. Katila was radiant at her wedding. No longer was she the prisoner of the Balumbu skin. She lived many happy years with her prince and saw her new village prosper under the wise leadership of her husband. As for her father, he died a miserable old man, realizing that the daughter he despised was happy and believing the daughter he loved had died. So there you have it. From the author, Symbols and Meaning, the green cloak embodies Katila's connection with nature. The water is the unconscious reflecting her true image on its surface. The fairies are divine messengers. The jewel-encrusted swords symbolize karma and justice. The faces in the trees are guiding spirits and bridge the unconscious realm of water to the conscious plane on the surface. The flying birds are emblems of the free spirit. The sparkles in Katila's hair connect her with the shape-shifting magic that delivers her from her cumbersome curse. You may find yourself trapped in a pool of anxiety. True that, right? Okay. <laughs> Inner this was a good card to pull. I'm glad that was this was funny how cards work, right? Inner turmoil manifests as outer despair and contributes to multiple worries. Instead of hiding behind your fears and worries, you need to face them head on and look more closely at the truth of the matter. Okay, so what do we think about this story? There's a few things that come up for me. I loved it, by the way. Uh, the deception part of it, looking at the world that we're in right now, making sure that you are asking lots of questions, that you don't really take anything at uh, face value, but you are brave enough and wise enough to ask questions. 
I think being willing right now to have a voice, to speak up, being willing to take a stand, being able and capable and willing to speak up and let people know what you think is important. I see a lot of people around me right now that are uncomfortable. They don't want to tell the world how they feel. They don't want to get in the pool and shed their skin and be authentic. They're afraid they're going to offend someone. They're afraid they're going to alienate someone. And so they speak not. I'm seeing a lot of it. I get it to some degree. I do. But at the same time, that's not leadership. We have to all take our place in leadership. We all have to be leaders. We have to be willing to have a voice to some degree, right? We have to be willing to have a few convictions. There's a saying that you have to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. It's a country song. It's also a saying from Letterkenny and lots of other things, I'm sure. But right now, that could not be more important. And I think that is part of what our story is telling us. I think uh, being willing to face what we're worried about head on. I think sometimes using the collective energy to help us to face what we are dealing with head on and moving through it is important too. That's where it's at for me. The only other piece of it was that I had said earlier that I do feel like in order for us to come together in a better place in this world, we have to start seeing each other as souls. And I felt like when Katila was in the pool, and the Balumbu skin melted off, we could see her soul. And that is what we need right now. We need to allow others to see us as we are. We need to see others as they are, see their souls. So that's where it's at for me.